O oh Goddess, may I then joyfully make a full moon like Tilak on your forehead, anoint your body with fine glistening vermilion, and make pictures on your breasts with perfumes. O oh Goddess, may I then joyfully Make a full moon like Tilak on your forehead. Anoint your body with fine glistening vermilion and make pictures on your breasts with perfumes. Notes. Sri Raghunath suffers intolerable agony because he cannot attain his beloved deity. And then again, he relishes the flavors of Swamini's devotional service in a transcendental vision. After bathing Swamini, he dried her off, dressed her, and made her braid. And now, he will make a tilak mark on her forehead. How can the devotee continue on this path if he never experiences or relishes anything? This relish causes the devotee to forget everything else and awakens his constant meditation on the Lord. Mm. This is the purpose of Upasana. Sri Pat Sankaracharya has explained the word Upasana as follows. Upasana means to hold on to a certain subject of meditation with such one-pointedness that no other subject matter can enter. For Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, there is nothing in this world except his connection with Sri Radha. In Bhakti Ratnakar, it is described how in his spiritual absorption, he rejected buttermilk from Sakistali, the village of Radha's arch-rival, Chandravali. There was one Brajavasi named Dasa, who loved Raghunath Das Goswami very much. He went to the village of Sakistali and found a big leaf cup there, which he brought along, thinking of Raghunath Das Goswami, who had given up eating all solid food out of his intense separation from Srimati Radharani. Dasa thought, it is Raghunath Das's rule to drink only one cup of buttermilk a day. So when I give him this bigger leaf cup, he can drink a little more. And so, brought some buttermilk from his house to fill up the big leaf cup. When he came before him, Raghunath, seeing the new cup, asked him, where did you get this big leaf cup from? Dasa said, I went to Sakistali to herd my cows, and I found this good leaf cup there, and I brought it to you. Hearing the name Sakistali, Raghunath Das became filled with anger and threw the leaf cup with buttermilk far away. After some time, he calmed down and told Dasa, That is the place where Chandravali lives. Don't go there. How wonderful is Sri Raghunath's loyalty to Sri Radha. What else can there be but strong feelings of mindness towards someone that you have ta you have known <coughs> for eternity? Anyone who has tasted even a little <coughs> of this spiritual practice will get some of this feeling of mindness towards Radharani also. And even though it may not be so strong, he will also feel some separation from Sri Radha. The nectar of Sri Radha's lotus feet is the greatest support for a devotee. The body <coughs> and everyone and everything connected with it is all temporary. It will all go. With whom 
Shall I stay then? I don't have any other place to stay but Sri Radha's lotus feet. This is the mood of an ekanta, one-pointed devotee. When feelings of separation set in, <coughs> the devotee feels intolerable agony. He cannot eat, sleep, and be merry anymore, and nothing can please his heart anymore. Mm. He can only be consoled by experiencing Swamini's form, taste, sound, touch, and smell. Whether in dreams, smarana, or during revelations. In his spiritual identity, as Tulasi, Sri Raghunath sits down close to Srimati and lovingly holds her chin with her left hand and a brush in her right hand and starts to make full moon shaped tilak of musk on her golden forehead. First, she draws a circle of aguru mixed with musk. Within that circle, she draws a beautiful fine lotus with lines of sindur. And in that fine lotus, she makes a tilak dot with sandalwood pulp mixed with camphor. This sweet tilak that shimmers on Swamini's sweet forehead is known as Kamayantra, or Cupid's instrument, which is able to control Mohan and give him the greatest bliss. It reminds Swamini of Mohan because it has the same color and fragrance as his. While Tulasi relishes all this beauty, she calls Swamini Devi. Hmm. How many meanings are hidden in this single word? Devi means the most effulgent and most beautiful girl, or the girl who lives in the town of Mohan's worship. She is most beautiful because of her Madana Mahabhav, which is not a material kind of beauty. Rasika Shekhar Mohan cannot appreciate mere surface beauty which is not arising from pure love for him. He does not accept any bliss which does not come forth from his internal pleasure potency. Only the flavor of pure love is dear to him. The word Devi also means she who plays with Mohan, satisfying him with her worship because Mohan plays in Radha, she is called Devi. He plays in other beloveds also, of course. But Sri Radha is a fountainhead of all of them. Hence, she is the empress of the town of Mohan's worship. The word puja means establishing gratification. Srimati Radharani is the endless storehouse of things that can gratify Mohan. She can madden him with desires that even he could not have imagined himself. She is Krishnendriya Vishrama Vidusalika, the resting place for all of Mohan's senses. There is no other such a playground for Mohan anywhere. How many sweet pastimes Tulasi reminds Radhika of while she calls her Devi and paints the tilak on her forehead. The black color and the scent of the musk both remind Swamini of Mohan. Swamini is immersed in it and pours her body into the stream of Tulasi's devotional wishes. Blessed is this maidservant.
there is no comparison to her love, which is marked by an abundance of feelings of mindness. Radha Rani trusts her maidservants even more than she trusts herself. They understand things before Swamini herself understands them. Sri Raghunath says, I don't just want devotional service, I want devotional service which is nourished by love. There seems to be a kind of feeling of non-difference of heart between Sri Radhika and her maidservants. All of Radha Rani's heart's experiences awaken within the maidservants' hearts also. Sri Radha is the self of the self. So how intolerable is the misery of not attaining her lotus-like feet? The maidservants feel the same pain of separation from Mohan that Radha Rani feels and the same bliss of meeting with Mohan that Radha Rani feels. The course of love cannot be stopped. It enabled Mahaprabhu to break through the three bolted doors of his Gambira cell to go out and meet Mohan. Another vision is the only thing that can save Raghunath's life during this painful time of separation. The relish of Radha and Mohan's sweetness in a transcendental vision is his very life support. Each devotee needs such visions as food for the soul. Manera Smarana Pran Madura Madura Dham hmm. Yugala Vilasa Smriti Sar The life force of the mind is Maran, which is the abode of all sweetness. And the essence of remembrance is the pastimes of Radha and Mohan. From the words of the Goswamis, we can understand how expert they were in relishing the sweetness of these pastimes. Sri Rupa Goswami writes, When, as you search for each other in Vrindavana, will I bring you together and get necklaces from you as a reward? Mohan begs Srimati Rupa Manjari, Rupa, won't you let me meet your Swamini? Rupa says, What reward shall I get then? Mohan gives her a necklace as a reward and Sri Rupa Manjari keeps it on her chest. Swamini awards her maidservant by kissing Mohan and Rupa Manjari keeps this vision as a necklace on her chest. Mm. The sweetness of the Yugala Milana, Milana is her best reward. Tulasi expertly draws scented pictures of Makari fishes on Swamini's golden pitcher-like breasts and anoints her beautiful body that mocks the beauty of molten gold with glossy vermilion. The black color and the fragrance of the musk of the tilak reminds Swamini of Mohan. Swamini is overwhelmed by these incitements. The expert dresser Tulasi makes Swamini bloom up by reminding her of the beautiful time when she first fell in love with Mohan. Once Swamini was in an ecstatic swoon for six hours after hearing Mohan's flute song and the Sakis having failed in all their endeavors to wake her up finally brought her to Purnamasi's Trahat. Purnamasi, the personification of Mohan's mystic illusion, Yogamaya, who always arranges for Radha and Mohan's meeting, had Madhumanga, her grandson, call Mohan and tell him that Radha had fainted because of his flute playing. When Mohan finally came, Vrinda Devi forcibly placed his lotus feet that are like the leaves 
of the reviving Sanjeevani plant on Radhika's heart, making her wake up instantly. When she opened her eyes and saw Mohan, she softly wept, making Mohan shyly walk away. Which poet could possibly describe even a drop of the transcendental bliss that Sri Sri Radha Mohan experienced when Mohan's lotus feet touched Radhika's heart. When Mohan walked away, the kumkum from Radhika's breasts that got stuck on his foot sole was printed on the grass of Vrindavan and the low-class Pulinda girls felt great joy from smearing that kumkum on their own breasts. For this reason, Tulasi blissfully rubs this reddish kumkum on Sri Radhika's breasts or makes pictures of wonderful, playful makari fishes on them while drawing pictures of these past sports on the slab of her heart. Rasa is thus served by Rasa in the kingdom of Rasa. The great poet Kavi Karnapur praises the attractiveness of Radhika's breasts in his Ananda Vrindavana Champu. While Mohan lifted Govardhan Hill, he began to perspire and shiver upon seeing Radha's breasts. When the cowherders saw these ecstatic transformations on his body, they affectionately thought that he had grown tired of lifting the hill and they began to help him with their sticks. Sri Rasika Chandradas sings, With spots of musk, I will make a tilak, like the full moon in autumn on your forehead, and I will eagerly anoint your beautiful golden body with an unguent of kumkum and musk. I will carefully make pictures on your breasts with different excellent perfumes. Please cast a merciful glance at me and accept me as your maidservant. Please keep me at your lotus feet to serve you. This is end of verse 24, Gurudev. Rathe, rathe, go.